Applications pretty busy actually because uh, five or four or five of those applications take quite, took quite a bit of time. They involve some industrial and commercial remodeling and uh, build outs of some buildings at Gottschalk Parkway and up at Rad Van where that bat, uh, month or so before when the Board of Appeals uh, handled that basketball court. Deal. Now she's right now submitted her plans for approval and they've been approved. Uh, we did have one new house, so we're actually starting out pretty good this time of year. We already have two new houses, which is, I don't think we had two new houses last year until July. So, uh, but as you can see there, it's pretty well spread out. We did, well, it shows up three denials. The denials have to do with variance requests, which will be processed this next coming month. Uh, to me, uh, but uh, <coughs> you know, no, no agriculture exemptions this month. We had uh, two, a month, two months before. So, two swimming pools, a couple fences, four additional accessory buildings. Uh, so, thirty total, or twenty total, thirty for the year. Uh, and like I said. Spent quite a bit of time on handling that uh, situation at the gravel pit there on um, Thorpe and Crackle Roads, but it's, I believe we've handled it as best we can, can at this point in time. I have not received any additional calls since I spoke with them. So. And I have neither. Any questions for Frank? Mr. Gordon. <coughs> Okay, Auburn Township Road Department report for March 2013. Uh, with the winter uh, winding down, we did see nine weather events that needed 11 rounds of plowing and or salting. Uh, the month's total of the icing material used was 207 tons. The average amount for the month of March, uh, when we experienced snow and ice, stands at 156 tons for that month. Yearly total to date is 1,954 tons, and I want to mention we do take care of 108 lane miles with that amount of tonnage. Uh, currently, we have uh, approximately 150 tons of salt in the dome. Uh, coal patching was done on various roads. We used about 1,000 pounds. And once again, I'm still using last year's eight tons that we purchased, and I still have some left, probably another half a ton. So uh, we're doing good there also. Uh, no internments for the month in the cemeteries once again, but we do have those uh, couple coming up here, and I do have one outstanding footer now. I got the paperwork. Uh, Route 44 property, we did empty uh, the debris and abandoned items, PJ, as you know there, and uh, we filled the 20-yard dumpster up with what was in there, and that's all cleared out now. 
Uh, the equipment held up uh, well during the winter, winter with minimal repairs. Uh, truck 16's dump cylinder, which you're aware of, we did do uh, some welding on that. We did that in house. Did the fuel filters on 19, and uh, truck 18's brakes were adjusted throughout the winter, which indicates that I will need slack adjusters put on this summer. Uh, we did do the slack adjusters on 19 this winter, so we'll do 18 this summer. Uh, road equipment is being prepped for service and delivery of the new backhoe is expected on or around April 9th. Uh, once again, Auburn's roadside cleanup is slated for April 20th and please be there if you can volunteer. And uh, preparations are being made in anticipation of this event. I do have a, I believe, 12 or 15 yard dumpster showing up this time, which will be there the day before. And uh, if we can, uh, once again for senior uh, large item day, senior trash day. Uh, we're not mailing out or the uh, Department of Aging isn't mailing out. So you want to get on the list early with the Department of Aging for the senior trash day because there won't be anything mailed to you to notify you. It will just be published in the circulars that go on. And that's all I got. Any questions for me? I can't even hear you. So, uh... No, no, that's going to be set up. Okay. Executive session for the interview. You're going to do it at the end. Okay. Close meeting? No report, Mr. Troy has my report. Well, Mr. Kavanaugh? Um, a couple of uh, volunteers from the church did some brush cleanup along the east edge, you know, where the cemetery and the church property are quite close together. Uh, can we pick that brush up? It's not much. It's less than the dump truck. Load. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Because they didn't have a truck, so it was Freddie and a couple other guys. And then my two weeks PJ that I I do dedicate to the cemeteries. We're going to continue down that uh, hedge lane and cut that back about two or three foot. If you notice, we did that along the drive there. Uh, it is encroaching uh, into the yeah, cemetery. Yeah, they did our so. yeah, it did our side. It looks it's an improvement. So okay. Thank you. I might let them know. Get to that. Uh, Mike, you're going to talk about the walkthrough of the building? Oh, well, yeah. The, we did a walkthrough with the USDA, and the PJ was kind enough to uh, do the walkthrough for us. So, why don't you go ahead and um, the post uh, while warranties are still in effect, we uh, met with uh, USDA, Homo Construction, the architect, Larson. Larson was there, our architect. Uh, 
you and I. That was it. Right? Mr. Dixon couldn't make it because of the weather. He was out of town. It was kind of short notice right. when I did come up until. And uh, yeah, plow and drive in order to get there, I think. Uh, Chief, you want to take it away from there? You had the checklist. And we had a few minor items that uh, we had questions about and uh, gave uh, USDA a list. And they're following through with it and almost going to take care of it. Really went pretty smooth, very, actually. Very smoothly. Real rope when you consider a $1.6 million project, uh, minor issues. These are all uh, part and parcel of any construction project. But uh, these guys, this was a well done project. And uh, like I said, uh, John and, and staff up there at the fire station, I'm sure you've gone over that with a fine tooth call. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, some places where maybe some baseboard is was an eighth inch up above the tile, things like that. But you notice when you're mopping, you yeah. know. Uh, but uh, well, yeah, uh, it's a lot better now. Actually, <laughs> uh, I thank you for all the attention to detail that you guys have over there too. And, uh, well, who at the last? The building we brought up. Oh. Yep. And Elmo was a great contractor. Also, they've addressed everything mm -hmm. that we brought up during this period. And uh, I've been back, and I think there's what, like eight items on the list, and all minor stuff. They said they take care of it. Uh, USDA was extremely happy with the building. What's the actual date, John, for the turnover? April 22nd, I believe. April 22nd. But if you make mention of these things prior to the warranty expiration, then they're covered. Everything's covered. So that's why we did what we did. We have, we have one item with the heating that we believe got, was rectified by the contractor, but when he was out, we got in the cold weather, so we haven't had a chance to see it back in hot weather again, and we noted that on our report to USDA, so they're going to bind it over that if there's still an issue, they're going to have to take care of it under warranty. That's, that's, the, only, that's the biggest thing to that. Because then it's probably well, we a pretty good run through with the... Uh, we have last year to get the air conditioning run through. Right, uh, and they made they made a few changes as far as you know the circulation and so forth. And right when they got to the last change, it got cold on us, so we didn't have a chance to really check it out. Uh, we noted that on our list, and USDA says no problem as long as we note it. If it's still an issue when we get back in the hot weather, we'll be able to take care of it. There's separate warranties on the different parts of the condensers and things like that, which I'm sure are different time frames. Right. <coughs> that, that's correct. Most separate. of it's all underneath the year. There's some extended warranties for stuff that you have to look up individually by the appliance and so forth. Right. One more thing was after our last meeting when we had uh, KCE here and we're talking about the storage building, the maintenance type building that we're, uh, you know, donated material and labor that's going at the park over there at the end of the driveway. Um, I called both you guys afterwards and, and thought that perhaps now would be a good time to look at a, a, a shelter at the south end of the playground, the proposed playground area and the drawing over there. Um, I've talked to the architect. Of course, the difference here is this is our project, publicly funded, and we have to go through the whole, we have to have estimates and everything else on this. Um, talking to the same architect that KCE used and the same architect that we've used at Adam Hall, uh, we need a site plan. If you look at some of these things that were, we, we really don't have a, the final draft of the site plan yet. Uh, certain areas, certain things we're looking at, you still have the parking area and the playground shifted and two different things. So I'd like to get, if, if you guys, you know, if the board approves of it, sit down with Mr. Gatowski and get this drawn up so we have one site plan. We aren't working from version one, two, or three, or six, I think, actually. Yeah. And so this architect can talk to it. If, if this is the architect we choose to use, too, it's another thing, perhaps, you know, if we want to go a different direction, now's the time. So 
like I said, that little gazebo idea I had. <coughs> yeah, you know, in a perfect world, we could probably slap something up and it would look nice, but no, we have to go through all these procedures. So. Well, I guess we need to kind of start to hone in on how they're uh, building the work with us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, his thought, I, I, I did have extensive talks with him over this, so maybe we'll want a set of those. Maybe we'll want. Maybe we want these smaller ones to accommodate different areas of, of the park as the fields develop, rather than one big central one, which to me sounds reasonable. Yeah, there's something to be said for a centralized pavilion too, especially if you're in you know, like I would say a normally. major, a major, but his thought of maybe doing this per, you know, quadrant of the park. That, that kind of, I don't know, it made some sense to me. I think most of the shelf area should be near where the playground is. You've got, you've got to be able to I think the, the most of it, the major part of it yeah. should be there because, you know, parents with kids over there playing and yeah. kids on the field. Plus they're going for a picnic, family picnic or something. You, you want, the, the, you want the, the, you know, spot for a big pavilion not to be, uh, you know, Discombobulated with a bunch of little ones. I'm not sure that we don't have though a current drawing, don't we? Or As PJ said, we're on version six. Yeah, yeah. I understand we're on yeah. version six. And the version six did not accommodate any structures other than no, yeah. we're talking no, about. Right. No. Yeah, we we need to the, the playgrounds there, uh, John. But uh, yeah. if you're talking to Zabel's now. We need to have that drawn up. If we can get. Uh, Joe up here, do you mind if I recognize that that works with the board if we do it during the daytime hour? <coughs> and we'll, you know, you mm -hmm. can, we'll do it right here and we'll have Nancy here too then. Okay. And we'll, uh, <coughs> we'll shelve all the other ones, we'll roll those other ones up and put them away. You know? uh, the one question is the, the major, the big uh, shelter you're talking about, would there be electric supplies in there? Mm -hmm. Put the proximity to the box. PJ, I have to keep the box six feet off the driveway now. We were going to go a little farther out into the field to accommodate the storage building, but I was uh, notified uh, by the illuminating company that it has to be no farther than six feet off the drive. Mm -hmm. So that's something to uh, take into consideration if we're going to run power to the shelter. Now. Yeah, if we're putting sticks on the ground here, it's time to have one plan that we just work to nail one plan. So mm -hmm. let's, let's see if we can get Joe up there. And and uh, you know, have uh, instead of these uh, different variations, just pick up one. Okay, that's all I have. Yeah, all right. Okay. Okay. The chief gave me the. Uh, uh, he was out. Uh, last last meeting, so he did give me the February calls of, uh, and we had. Uh, so 34 calls, 26 rescue, eight fire, uh, three mutual aid given, two mutual aid was received for a total of 34. And uh, 19 from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. and then 15 from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So pretty close split there. And days of the week, Sunday 7, Monday 3, Tuesday 6, Wednesday 7, Thursday 3, Friday 6, and two on Saturday. So, I'm going to get caught up and we'll have the uh, March. Uh, next That's next meeting. Man. All right. And uh, went to the Health District Advisory Council uh, meeting and uh, uh, we did uh, reappoint uh, Timothy Gorgon, uh, which was also recommended by the steering committee. And uh, for anybody, people that don't know, the Health District Advisory Council elects the, uh, or appoints the Board of Health. And there's five, uh, what is it, six members? President, five on the board. And five on the board. And uh, the Health District Advisory Council is, is composed of uh, chairperson of the township trustees, or uh, designate, if, uh, and then uh, mayors of villages and cities and so we needed to have 13 people for a quorum they did have a quorum so we were able to uh, uh, take care of that bit of business and Bob passed out a uh, 
little interesting. Uh, one of the things that Bob did as he took over is, is got rid of uh, inside assessments for the various townships and villages. And the 12 years that he's been working this now, he saved a total of over $5 million for the townships and the uh, other communities. And specifically, uh, Auburn, $335,352 we've done our assessments. We've done our assessments. So uh, right now, they uh, came out with the 2014 budget. Everything looks good. They made quite a few cuts. So uh, they should have you know adequate funding so long as something major doesn't happen. And uh, the top's doing a good job. And uh, he's, he guess he's got a couple years of retirement yet, so he's not ready to give it up yet. That's all I had. I had the warrant. <coughs> uh, 9285 through 9304 for $22,105. That's 38 cents. I gave you current financials. Um, John Stein, sir, did you all three, I guess, sign that uh, conference? Yes. Just, did it come back? Yeah. A letter, yeah. Did you do it and not want to attend? Um, and the bank rep is here from March. Um, and then I don't know if you want to discuss the Stanley Medical Lead Act at all. It's part of our manual, but um, it so in no, I think we need to just make a update the employment manual to, to reflect that the. While we're a part of it, unless we have 50 employees, yeah. they're not eligible. Okay. And then um, we signed the uh, Caterpillar sales agreement mm -hmm. and went a change of bank for better, which is great. Oh, and I need a blanket certificate um, for the general fund, and probably 10 grand or something. Not the rest, from an appropriation. So that was, I need a motion to that. Second. Can you your vote? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mike? Yes. Done. Yeah. And that's all I have? Okay. Uh, one of the things we had, uh, we got to receive a letter from the latest letter from somebody over on, the, on Taylor Bay Road regarding the Taylor May, Mund intersection, <coughs> and uh, you know this is an intersection that's been subject to discussion for a long, long time. Uh, it's a dangerous intersection. Uh, everybody recognizes that. Um, one of the this specific letter was requesting <laughs> that we post two-way stops on the signs. Signs are, are put up by a uniform manual that we subscribe to. And uh, there's such a thing as having too many signs. There's a, such a thing as having signs that aren't relevant. Uh, so we usually defer to that manual everywhere. And one of the big things with the signs is, is you want uniformity throughout your community with your signs. And uh, we've, we've in, you know, investigated the, getting a sign that might have flashing lights on it, like you see over at the Bainbridge Fire Station. Um, we worked with the folks at the county quite closely on this, and in fact, even asked them just again to review all of the signage. And the signs are there. Uh, and of course, remind everybody that. Monroe Road is a county road, and they, uh, Taylor Bay is a, is a township road. Uh, the county actually owns the stop signs on Taylor May in the <coughs> intersection, so they, 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 those are their signs. Um, the issue that's really what we have is, is that we have people that are speeding mm -hmm. in the northbound lane of one road. If you were to drive this 
speed limit, you meet the sight distance requirements as you go up the skill. Uh, it's not, doesn't exceed those minimum distances, but it does meet those. Um, when you speed, you don't, you exceed those. Obviously, the time is short, and I never attest that when you're plowing that intersection, it's always a little bit dicey because you're in a plow truck and you have people shooting over this hill, and uh, it's very difficult to stop, especially when you're exceeding the speed limit. Um, so aside from that, I think one of the things we need to do is contact um, the sheriff's department and see if we can get some random enforcement of speed limits, especially on the northbound side of Taylor Bay. Um, and I'm gonna guess that rush hour times would be a good start. Uh, we, we continue to have this dialogue with the county. They're aware of the scenario and, and uh, so they have been looking at this, and uh, they, you know, with no nothing beyond looking at it. Again, and, uh, this is no active projects or anything like that, but they're very well aware of the situation. But in the meantime, uh, they've advised us do not put up two-way stop signs, and they they had a good point. It's very easy to see when you're parked at those on Taylor May, that it, there is no stop sign on one. And in fact, those aren't even the problem areas. The problem is not cars that are going, not stopping on Taylor May, east or west. The problem is cars speeding north on Monday. That's where the problem is. Because <coughs> you have tremendous sight clinical distance from the north to the south. So that would be my suggestion. I think that, uh, they brought that up again is that you know you, you need to, we need to look at speed limit enforcement since the, it does meet the established distances for for 55 mile an hour road now there is a sign that does it's a black on uh, yellow sign saying hey suggest the speed limit is 45 to that intersection the signage is all there yeah but uh, put that in uh, Years ago, I thought that we got that. Yeah. The signage is there. There's no more signage that you can put up. There's a lot more traffic there, but it's real similar to the intersection of Stafford and Messenger with southbound cars on mm -hmm. Messenger. You know, if they're speeding, if they're doing the speed limit, which I'm 50 in there, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's not a blind hill. Mm -hmm. But if they're doing 60 or 65, most well, cars are right on you at Stafford. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's the same, but there's, like you said, there's a lot more traffic over there. So, Ian, uh, do you have anything to throw into that mix? Or? No, you covered everything there. Uh, the signage is in place, as you said. Uh, and once again, we do have the stop heads that we have in place uh, on ours, and everything's at the suggested uh, distance from the intersection. Uh, once again, to reiterate, it's the enforcement uh, uh, fact with that speed there uh, and according to my conversation today this is currently under review the physical intersection itself and the signage so they are reviewing it uh, and anything uh, in the future they're going to keep me updated uh, so we can go back to our residents and let them know that uh, we're not letting it languish that uh, everyone is well aware well I think we need to publicize the fact a that we're going to be getting stupid stepping up enforcement, mm -hmm. which is really the, the main issue. Nick, is there anything you need to throw into the mix, or do you agree? No, I think, uh, Eric, with your conversation with Shane today, probably covered most of it, but enforcement's going to be the number one. You know, so it's, it's, it's that we are looking at. We'll give you this opportunity to be forewarned that, uh, and then, as in many times, the first guy to get a ticket will be the guy who was, uh, Complain. <laughs> 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 so I live right there. I never complain about it. Cause that's <laughs> and never forget a lucky bell we had many years ago. A certain lady was constantly screaming and yelling, and we did go out and and get some uh, 
extra enforcement out there and the first ticket was hers. And <laughs> that really set her off. So, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that, uh, with that, I'll draw up a letter and I'll probably give Dan a call to explain what we would, we'd like to see happen if we could. And, uh, and we'll also draw up a letter uh, to the lady who wrote in. And, she actually she might be person could be applied to the engineer's office. A lot of knowledge on science. Uh, well, let's see. After witching hour has arrived, so uh, we're going to open up a couple of bids. And uh, first, I guess we're going to do is the bids for the Route 44 property. Well, the formal bid amount is $165,000 cash offer. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll review those. All right. Next, we're going to do the, uh, what do we have here for Gypsy? Can we do Gypsy? Chip seal of various roads. Construction Inc. in Cuyahoga Pipe and it's 248825. Who is that? <coughs> We've been on my crack seal. Uh, yeah. And Rania Caden. is 
Shelly Company in Flintsburg, and it's 586 831.25. Green Valley Paving, Monroe, 435, 720. That's really, we don't really need to go out for gravel and all that. We, our, our usages are very minimal on those things. Um, we do want to uh, continue, though. Uh, we, well, we're going to be, next meeting, we're going to have our uh, crack ceiling, mm -hmm. which will be going out. And of course, that's the number one priority is to crack seal. And uh, so uh, we will be getting that bit out. And, uh, so we can get it out for the, get it back here in May. Uh, we also had a, a, a issue here. We're going to go out and uh, finish off some of these concrete repairs over in Lucky Bell we've been doing over the last two years. Um, the 
the joints that we did three years ago are all in the exact same condition as when they're installed. Mm -hmm. So they've seen three ways. And uh, that was, of course, a big question mark as to whether they were going to hold up or not. And they held up very, very well. So we need to um, uh, continue on. We've got a, two more slabs, maybe? There, there'll be three slabs, three slabs in, in the Whisperwood circle. And uh, so we're going to, we'd like to go out and prepare a bid for those. Mm -hmm. Do the, the remaining joints and uh, most of the joints are going to be on uh, shadow wood. Shadow wood. Uh, so we do the remaining joints and the slabs. Then there'll be two separate bits that we'll put together. One, they're two different specialties. Uh, so those will be. also had a uh, request from a, a resident who lives on 44, and this has become about an every three or four year request, to do a speed study between uh, on Ravenna Road from Derbyshire to Edinburgh, and uh, ODOT will perform that for us at no cost. So, uh, you gentlemen have no objection. Yeah, we, uh, most recently we had uh, asked for that down at the area closer to the corners. Mm -hmm. And what year was it? 08? I don't know. I think it was 08. Uh, this is, uh, this request from the property owner is more specific to the uh, new sub, the newer subdivision roads mm -hmm. up there from, up to the north. Won't hurt. Those I, I can remember that those are based on accident statistics and fatalities get so many points and it's, it's just kind of it's kind of macabre actually. But uh, why not? I'll make a motion that we go ahead and request that study. No second. Okay. And your vote, PJ? Yes. Mike. Yes. John. Yes. We need to get this already spring, you know, guys. We got to do get uh, plant some flowers again. Anybody? Uh, we have the continuation of the bid from those from last year. We have. A Basically, they're going to do it for the same proposal as in the past. I think she added. Did this flower bud get added? Nancy said she was going to talk to him about fire department beds. Around the time. I think she had those. But she I don't did. know that she heard back from us. This, this is just the same word that was done last year. Yeah, I know she had a, <coughs> I, I can't remember because she rattled them off as I was on the phone with her. I didn't write them down, but I think she had it. I know the planters are all in now. Uh, I don't know about this bed. This new one over here. Oh. What does? Maintain that thing. I'm sure we can get him to. Yeah, that's, uh, that that was that's, that's, my, that's my neighbor. I'm sure we can get him up here to do it. So, uh, West Bed at Adam Hall. Now that Eagle Scout that did that project is now like uh, getting to pushing his mid 20s. Probably about time to uh, add that to the list. So, I think she had. She had something going where she was going to get these prices. I don't know if it's included there or not. She sent me over the
installation and maintenance of seven township beds as uh, for the job specification provided in 2011. So we're going to get them old and like take a look at the fire department beds as part of this project. But we thought that that sign should be brought up a little bit, kind of overgrown, and we turned it back. Yeah, that can make the chainsaw taken and push back there. <laughs> we we trimmed a lot off of it, <laughs> but it should start all over again, I think. So, well, you, you want to do that as a, you, you want to start with this? And start with this and then then Yeah, I know she had some add-ons. I, like I said, I can't remember all of them. But. Well, they can start it on these and we can do a nice job. We can amend the contract for yeah. any additional work. You don't have well, we pretty much tried to keep it so it's easy to maintain and uh, probably some of the mulching should be freshened up. Yeah. Other than that, we've got trees and the plants are pretty stout out. I lost one plant over the winter probably, but uh, that'd be the only thing. Right. There's not a lot of area. Uh, it's mulch just the front of the building and down at the north end. Okay. I'll make a motion to uh, uh, go ahead and contract with Lowe's for uh, the maintenance of the seven township beds, pretty existing contract, uh, four thousand two hundred twenty dollars. Second. Second person, second. Okay. Um, <coughs> yes. Mike. Yes. Don. Yes. Um, we do have a uh, contract here from Penn, Ohio, and we did some shopping uh, for the dumpsters for cleanup day. And as part of the uh, deal, they have also thrown in a small dumpster for us to do for the roadside pickup day. So we uh, make a motion that we uh, stay with Penn, Ohio on that. Is there a dollar amount on that? Um, you know, this it, it's not actually dollar amount because they're going to reimburse you with, you know, wow. okay. so just how much you collect and, yeah. And it's even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is the one, con uh, the one contract that we have that mm -hmm. does <coughs> take the tires right. and takes the tires on the ends. Ever since uh, John Westover passed away and he shut his business down, you, you guys all know we used to yeah. uh, go with John and have the tires removed. Uh, None of the other major service providers uh, have hauling of uh, the tires. Yeah, so we have to have a cer certified carrier. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and, uh, grant for that. Yeah, and yeah. through the last few years, the grant has covered every penny of the uh, tire, of the tire dumpster. So and it's kind of popular, actually, on that day. Oh, yeah. Different and once tires. again, we have to publish a, a limit uh, so we don't have uh, 100 <laughs> truck pulls coming in. So I'll make a motion to stick with Penn, Ohio. <coughs> Your vote, DJ? Yes. Mike? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, let's push it. We do the bag. There you go. Well, I can't follow through the published case. Would you like to do Yeah. For the asphalt projects, we publish them on the 7th, open them on the 15th. Okay, any public comment? Yes, um, I didn't hear discussion of the uh, fiscal officer assistant pay, number one. Uh, number two, I heard reference to a blanket certificate for the general fund. Uh, gentlemen, um, please tell us what the blanket certificate is for and the dollar amount. And my third question comment refers to uh, the site plan at uh, Auburn Community Park, which was formerly known as Cavens Park. And my question is whether the planned gazebo was part of the original site plan that was submitted to Senator Grendel uh, prior to his granting the hundred thousand dollar grant. Well, the gazebo wasn't no. Yeah. Or that end. No. 
thing. And the other two um, questions, I would appreciate an answer. Oh, about that. Yeah, yeah, we haven't really interviewed yet. Oh. I, we ran an ad. Right, I saw it twice I, in a, twice. That's it? You don't oh. have a rate? You don't have a rate of pay? I do not accept the pay that is set by the board. And I, I don't thought know revised they, code established that the fiscal officer established the pay rate. I think you read it wrong. That's entirely possible. That's why I'm asking you for well, clarification. Well, so she could establish that she needs to hire an assistant, but we would set the rate. Okay, and further uh, uh, an explanation about the blanket certificate. We haven't heard much about blanket certificates in recent meetings, so I'd appreciate any clarification. That we we opened three bl uh, five blanket certificates at the beginning of the year to cover January, February, and March. Right. And they were, well, I think, $3,000 each in mm -hmm. five different funds. Uh, the general fund is pretty much spent down. There's just a couple hundred dollars left. So I am requesting, now that we have permanent appropriations, mm -hmm. and a $10,000 blanket certificate to cover most any expense, operating expense, for the general fund or even other funds. Thank you, that's helpful. You're welcome. Good question. Motion of all motion. Second. DJ, your vote? Yep. Mike? Yep. John? Yes. 